There is the canoe in the water. We pushed it in a couple days ago and I, you know, had fun. It looks kind of great. Pushing it around. It's a boat. Yeah, so I think what, it's- What, it, what, how, how has the, you've paddled it? Yeah, well, I didn't paddle it. I had a pole, so I pulled it around. Okay. Uh, it was great, fun experience. It's heavy. Uh -huh. It's heavy right now at uh -huh. this. Uh, obviously, we got some weight to get out of it. Uh -huh. uh, but it's cool to have a canoe that's like, yeah. It's, it's, and, it's, oh, we were sore. I bet. After all that chipping wood. I bet. And it makes that paddling all that much sweeter. <laughs> right, right. It does. I mean, everybody's grip was bad and everything because yeah. they're holding those tools. So. So uh, how does it compare to the one, to mine, the one that you paddled I, before? I think it's, I mean, obviously you can tell it's still heavy. It doesn't want to, you know, turn as fast. Uh -huh. uh, so, but, but uh, it's, I think it's going to be, it's going to be a, a lot of fun. Getting, and it feels good stuff. to build your own boat, Oh gosh, it? it does, it does. <laughs> so the next step I think is a burn, right? Yes, I think so. So I we're going to, we're going to get some of the, the, some of the weight off, some of skinning up those sides. I right. think burn is going to be a lot faster than chipping it out with the tools. It will at this point because right. you're, you're able to put enough fuel in there to really make a lot of heat and, and, right. and get some work right. done with it. So we're just, do we just stack it all up in there? Just stack it up in there and pile it so it's a little higher than the edges and then wow. be ready with the water because if it goes too fast, you have to put it out quick. Okay. So uh, tell me what we need to do to make sure we don't damage this boat. Okay, so for, for just for safety of the boat, you want to be ready with water all the time. Okay. It's going to burn the sides much faster than the bottom. Uh -huh. As long as that bottom is in the water, it won't burn through, but you don't right. want it to go much less than about, right. about like that. Uh -huh. So you want to be ready with the water, and but, I see you have some mops. But mostly right here is our your, big concern. Yes, you're going to have, it's going to tend to want to burn on the top and burn down, and you don't want that to happen. You want right. to keep that at this, right. at this height okay. all the way along. And that's just going to require a lot of constant water so, application. Okay. Good. Um, and you've probably seen that in the in the uh, historic record right. where they talk about having to keep water on them. And that's that's why we go ahead and burn it right in the water. That way you have that water right there ready. Right. And should you need to, you can fl you can just swamp it immediately. Okay. okay. So let's start this fire the right way. What have you got here? Hand drill. Ha hand drill. Hand drill fire. Let's do it. Hey Ryan, yes. just put your hand on that to keep it from going anywhere for me. Tuck this it bursts into flames. Well, you know. well, if it bursts into flames, move your hand quick. <laughs> I hate to see my friends get burned. Now that is a fire. Okay. Actually, I like to touch it to a bit of this just for a coal extender. Normally, I would actually just dump that directly in here, right. but in this moist conditions, I'm going to go ahead and use a piece of uh, tinder fungus because it's so easy. Once you have the coal, the tinder fungus will hold it for a long time.
I'm afraid we might have uh, some real problems over here with the canoe. Let's check it out. So here's our real difficult spot right here at the end of the canoe. We had this chipped out probably down to about two inches. We burnt this canoe two or three times the other day. And it's really hard to see what was going on down in the bottom as you're burning. It's hard to measure, uh, but uh, let's take a look here. This is a foot long stick. This canoe is 13 inches from top to bottom. And what we're looking for is a two inch bottom. So I should have about an inch left on the stick as I measure. And if I come to here, I go down to this low spot. Whoa. We got, we got less than an inch of the bottom of the canoe left right here at this spot. Here, we might have an inch or so, but we've got some real problems. We cannot burn. It's all, we've already gone past what we need to. We cannot burn anymore in this area, the, but the sides are still way too thick. We, we're still got, you know, some places four, five inches of wood to burn off. So. Uh, we've got to come up with a way that we can continue to burn the canoe, but not damage the bottom. So here's our solution. I was talking to Eric about this uh, early on when we were discussing the burn. And he said, if there are times when you're getting too far on a spot, especially on the bottom, you can cover that spot with sand to use as an insulator. And so I've got a bucket of sand here that we can put in the low spots and then continue burning. There's a problem though with the sand. And that is, is once we start using the sand, we cannot come back in here with iron tools because they will instantly, that sand, if you hit it, it'll ruin the edges of the tools. So uh, it's sort of like we're at this spot where we have to choose. Are we gonna use metal tools or are we just gonna burn from here on out? If I use this sand, we've gotta burn. We cannot go back to the tools in any great, in any great fashion without ruining them. We're gonna put the sand in we're going to keep burning. Well, Eric, I, I think we're pretty much done with this guy. We did a couple more uh, burns. I put sand in the bottom mm -hmm. uh, to protect those thin spots because we were getting thin in a couple right, spots. Right. Uh, and then did a couple more burns. And you know, I, I think while we could continue to you know, chew on this thing for hours, days, I think it's ready to use. What do you think? I can tell it's gonna float. It's a boat. Yeah. It, it's, yeah, it's yeah. ready. It, it'll, it'll work now. And yeah, you could thin it up a little bit in places, but it's usable as is. Right. Hop in. All right, I will. Take it for a spin. There you go. Oh yeah, it's nice and stable. Comes right around when it starts to tip. Yeah, that's a nice canoe. And that's, it's floating pretty flat? It's, it's, it doesn't list at all. And that just, sometimes they will and sometimes they won't. And you had one that the, the forces balance perfect. Yeah. It gives me a whole new respect for people of the past and what they did for their daily needs on a daily basis, you know, having trouble holding on to things or getting blisters where you've never had blisters before and, you know, it's, it was a struggle, so, but I think it was all part of the experience and that's what made it important. We worked hard on this. I mean, it was, it was really cool to be able to get into the canoe that, that we built with primarily tools 
that they had in the time period and, and kind of get a small glimpse of what that experience was like for them. It was really neat. I thought the perfect way to end this journey is with a reading out of Cresswell's journal, something that inspired me to make this canoe in the first place. Friday, April 14th, 1775, this morning Rice and another man began to cut down a tree to make a canoe and have left it entirely to his management. Two weeks later, Thursday, April 27th, 1775, we got our canoes finished and our provisions collected together. We intend to set out tomorrow. The next day, Yogahaney River, April 27th, launched our canoes. One of them we call Charming Sally, the other Charming Polly. They're 30 feet long and about 20 inches wide, made of walnut trees, dug out something like a manger. We proceed down the river. For the next two months, Cresswell spends in a canoe something like this, traveling in the back country of what is now uh, along the Ohio River and up into Kentucky on the Kentucky River. He has just some tremendous adventures and uh, their canoes, they, some, one of the canoes gets broken in half because of buff, a giant herd of buffaloes. They have to repair their canoes, but the canoes are, are what made that travel possible. He could not have done that same kind of trip without a canoe. It's a, su such a pleasure to be able to have access and make um, a canoe like this exactly like they would have done in the time period and uh, you know experiencing using the canoe and and we'll use this canoe later on uh, next year for other kinds of travels but just the making of it and trying it out such a journey right back into history i had so much fun with this project i can't wait to do more